Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the user interface on the Rivian R1T. So there's a ton of features to cover, lots of menus and awesome content. This video is going to go super in depth and if there's any specific info you're looking for, check the description below. I've got a list of all the key features and subjects in this video. So starting with the top left of the screen, you've got your lock and unlock button there. The user profile is also on your top left of the screen. This is where you can control the position of the steering wheel. To adjust it, you actually use the scroll wheels on the steering wheel. And then to adjust your side mirror position, you also use the buttons and the scroll wheel on the steering wheel to move those up and down and left to right. Lastly on the controls, the seat controls are on the side of the seat. So as you move those, you can see the window just pops up to prompt you to remember your seat position. So once you get everything set, you can just click remember and that will store all of your settings. And the last icon on the top left is your stored garages. So I've got my home garage stored here. As soon as I click that button, if I was at home, it would open up my garage door. And then on the bottom left here, if you click that little gear, it will show you your garages. You can edit the name of the garage and you can also remove them from this menu and then you can add multiple garages that will save in the system here and then this will take you through a set of prompts to store them in the system if you had multiples they would show up in a list in this menu here so the top right of the screen here you've got your hotspot i don't have that turned on right now but i'll show you how to turn that on later in the video Obviously, I've got my temperature here. It's pretty hot today. The Bluetooth, you can click on that icon. It will show you what Bluetooth device is connected. And then you can also add Bluetooth devices through this menu here. If I click this button here, this is your Wi-Fi. So it's going to display the local Wi-Fi networks here. And if I was connected to a Wi-Fi network, it would show me which one I was connected to. And then there's a built-in LTE hotspot in the vehicle. So right now I've got full service on the LTE through the vehicle. And the last little icon there obviously is the current time. On the bottom of the screen, you've got your climate control. So if you tap this, it shows you the front climate controls to start. To move the vents around, you grab these little icons and slide them. And this will change the direction of where the vents are pointing. You can also tap them to turn them on and off. So right now I've just got these four vents turned on on the IP, but you can also tap these buttons down here or up here so I can turn on the floor vents or the windshield vent just with a tap of these buttons here. With these vents, every once in a while, I'll have them pointed in a direction and they're not really going the direction they're supposed to go. So I found if you just tap them and shut them off, that will reset the position. And then when you turn them back on, they tend to reset and point in the right direction. So in the center of the screen, this button controls the AC. So if I tap this, it's still gonna blow air, but it's not gonna be cold AC air. I'm gonna turn that back on because it's hot. Now if I hit auto, that's gonna automatically adjust the temperature based on whatever I have it set to down here. And then down here, you've got your vent speed. And then sync will sync the passenger side temperature with the driver side temperature. You've got your heated steering wheel. There's just one setting for that. The heated seats have three settings. So there's a high, medium, and a low. And then there's also vented seats, which is really nice on hot days like this. And there's also a high, medium, and low setting on that. So both the driver and passenger have the option for heated seats as well as the vented seats. The rear passengers, however, only have heated seats. There's no vented seats in the second row. And then on the left side of the screen, if I click rear, this lets me control the vents for the rear passengers. So they've just got two vents back there. And then you can also send air um, to the feet down there as well. Now, if I click this little icon unlocked, it'll allow them to adjust their vents from the screen in the second row. So for the second row screen, you can turn the air on and off with this power button here. You cannot control the temperature at all from the second row. That has to be set from the front screen. 
You can change the heated seats. You can turn those on and toggle them off. And then you can also turn off one side and leave the other side on with these buttons here. And then the last feature is the lights. You can toggle those on and off with the top of the screen here. And the last icon that was actually just introduced in the latest software update is pet mode. So there's a little paw up in the top right here. If you have your pets in the vehicle and you gotta run into the grocery store or you're not in the vehicle, it'll keep the cabin at a comfortable temperature for them. So you tap that, turn on pet comfort, and then when you leave the vehicle, it keeps them nice and cool. And then when you have it in pet mode and you're away from the vehicle, it actually displays this cool little cartoon so people outside the vehicle know that your pet is safe and comfy inside the cabin. So there's six icons along the bottom here. The first one is your map. In the top left, there's a search bar so you can search for an address, uh, business, anything like that. And then you've got a little star and that will give you the ability to set your favorites. You can set a home location, a work location, and you can also favorite any address when you've typed it in to the search bar. You can just click this little star here and it'll add it to your favorites. And then within those favorites, from wherever your location is currently, it displays the drive time to get to each of the locations. This little gear will let you adjust your settings for navigation. So you've got your audio volume. You can uh, decide whether it just makes a chime when you're supposed to turn or do something for the navigation or if it'll actually talk to you. The map, right now I've got it in 3D mode. There's a 2D mode as well that's just a top-down view. And then you can also set it so north is always up. Here you can display traffic. And then when you're navigating, you can set the navigation to avoid highways, avoid ferries, or avoid tolls. And then in this area, you can also clear your search, save destinations, and recent destinations. This little charge icon here will display charging stations nearby you. You can see these little icons pop up with the number of chargers. You can filter by the speed of the charger, depending on how fast a charger you're looking for. You can also filter by the network. So if you just wanna look at Rivian charging stations or Electrify America, you can select either one or multiple of these and it will just display those charging stations. If you don't select any, it just displays any possible charging station in the area. And then you can also filter by availability. So if it knows a charging station is occupied, it won't show it here on your map. And then the last little icon lets you switch from this satellite view to a more basic map view. So in this map view, you can move the map around, you can pinch to zoom here, and then if you want to just set a location based on this view, you can just tap and hold, and it will give you the time to that destination. If I click on this, it's gonna show me the directions It'll show you the distance, how long it's gonna to take to get there, and also what your charge will be when you arrive at the destination. Also, when you have this pop-up menu for the navigation showing, if you click this little icon here, it lets you avoid highways, avoid ferries, and avoid tolls. So if you're trying to avoid any of those things, this is where you wanna do it when you're setting your navigation. Now also, if I have a destination set Obviously it's gonna zoom in and display the directions. If you click this icon here, it's gonna give you a full map overview of the trip. And then you can also set the audio guidance on or off in this menu as well. If you were to end the navigation and didn't want to, it displays this little icon for a little bit so you can actually resume a trip if you accidentally canceled it. So the second icon, at the bottom here is music. The top setting is for radio. You've got a little slide bar that you can set the station to. You can also use uh, these buttons to just search for stations. And then if you're on a station and you wanna favorite it, you just hit that little heart button and your favorites will show up down here. The second icon is Spotify, so you can control your Spotify through here. You do have to log in and have an active Spotify account to be able to use this feature. Then the third icon, which I'll be honest, I haven't really used much, is called TuneIn Radio. There's a lot of options here. 
um, for different stations that you can check out. The fourth icon is your Bluetooth. So if you're connected to your phone and you wanna play music through your phone, you can access it with that little icon there. And the last icon down here is the controls for the audio. This Meridian sound system is really incredible also. It's uh, probably one of the best sounding speaker systems I've experienced in, uh, in a vehicle. So you can set where you want the music to be centered on. If you've moved it into a position you don't want it anymore, just tap that little button and it will set it back to center. You can adjust the EQ settings. There's slide bars for each of the frequencies. If you're into really fine tuning your audio experience, you can definitely do that here. So you can adjust the EQ settings manually if you want to. You tap this button to reset it to the default. And then if you push this little icon here at the top right, um, there's some preset EQ settings that are built into the system as well. So there's also a soundstage focus. You basically are just moving the audio from the left side to the right side of the cabin or centering it. There's also a 3D surround sound that you can turn on or to enhanced and a dynamic sound adjustment. So the dynamic sound adjustment will adjust the volume based on how quickly the vehicle is moving. Obviously, as you're driving faster, there's more noise so it will bump the audio up a little bit you can see in the user manual here um, just a little bit more of the details about what the sound stage the 3d surround as well as the dynamic sound adjustment does so then this third icon is your drive modes there's all-purpose sport conserve off-road and towing so all-purpose is just a general usage drive mode um, it says all roads, all weather for all kinds of adventures. So this is basically what you're probably going to leave the truck in 90% of the time for just standard driving. You can adjust the ride. It defaults to soft, but if you want a firmer ride, you can set that to stiff. You can also adjust the brake regen. So what that's going to do is when you let off the accelerator, it's going to use the electric motors in each wheel to slow the vehicle down without you having to use the brakes. And that will actually help you regain range in some situations. So you can set that to standard and then there's also a high. So when you have it on high, it is pretty aggressive. If you're letting off the accelerator even just a little bit, you're gonna feel it start to slow the vehicle down. But that optimizes your regenerative braking. You can also set the stability control here it obviously defaults to on. If you're in situations where you want a little bit of wheel spin, you can set it to reduced. And then if you want to completely turn the stability control off, you can do that here as well. It'll prompt you a second time before it lets you turn that off completely. On the top right corner, it's going to display your current ride height and that's your ground clearance at the moment. Right now it's in standard, which is the default for all purpose you can set it to high or low in all-purpose mode. And then if I switch to sport, the available settings will change depending on what mode you're in. So in sport mode, I can only use low and lowest. If I'm in conserve, it'll let me select standard all the way through lowest. And then in off-road mode, my range is from standard all the way to highest. So it really depends on what mode you're in, what you're gonna be able to set your ride height to. So in sport mode, the ride is gonna to default to stiff. The brake regen is going to default to high. Stability stays on. Again, you can adjust that as necessary. In conserve mode, you're gonna get the most range out of the battery. So this will optimize your acceleration and brake regen to get you the most range. This mode will default to lower ride heights though. So it's really something I've only been using on smooth pavement or the highways. When you're in the lowest ride height setting, um, it's obviously gonna be a pretty stiff ride. So you don't really wanna use this when you're on a really bumpy road. Also, when you're in conserve mode, you will just be in front wheel drive. So the two rear wheels will not be driven by the electric motors. It's just front wheel drive in this mode. Now, if I go to off-road mode, it's going to prompt you that this is not intended for paved roads. 
once you select that, there's more settings within the off-road mode. You have all-terrain, soft sand, rock crawl, rally, and drift. So I've been using all-terrain so far for all of my off-roading, but I haven't done anything too challenging yet. The soft sand mode will, again, prompt you to make sure you're actually in soft sand. I'm just going to select that because I'm not going to be driving right now, but you'll see the whole image changes and it lets you know that you are in soft sand mode. It also recommends to air down the tire pressure for best performance when you're in soft sand. I would recommend airing down the tires in most situations when you're off-road for sure. Now in rock crawl mode, you can see again the image changes for this. You've got an extra setting though down here at the bottom you'll notice. So there's still ride, you can still adjust the brake regen, but there's a new one in this setting called hold. Now this will let you turn on and off the hold. So if I normally let go of the accelerator, it will stop the vehicle on its own. If you turn hold off, which is the default for rock crawl, you actually have to depress the brake to stop the vehicle. And then when you select rally mode, the ride heights are again going to adjust based on this mode. This is for obviously quicker driving. I haven't tried this one out yet, but I'm interested to see what this is like. And you've also got a drift mode and this will prompt you again to turn off stability it's gonna let the truck drift a little bit I need to test this out to really see how this is gonna perform but I'm pretty excited to try this one out and then the final mode is towing now I don't have a trailer detected right now obviously I'm not towing anything but it will be able to tell when you have a trailer detected and this mode is optimized for towing. So that's a quick summary of the different drive modes. The next icon is gonna be a bunch of your vehicle settings. The first one at the top left here is access and security. So I can open the hood, the charge port, gear tunnels, basically any of the doors I can open from the inside of the vehicle here. There's um, another icon to adjust the wheels and mirrors. This is another way you can do that aside from selecting your um, driver profile at the top here. You can also fold the mirrors in if you want to manually here. And there's a car wash mode as well. I won't turn that on right now, but basically if you're going through an automatic car wash, this will keep the vehicle from um, freaking out <laughs> when you're getting towed along in an automatic car wash. So I'm not gonna select that right now because I'm not in a car wash. And then the top right here, you've got this security system called Gear Guard. So if I turn on Gear Guard video, when the vehicle is parked, it will automatically sense when someone gets close to the vehicle and take a video using all the cameras. Now you can select which locations that Gear Guard will be active. So the default is everywhere but you can also set it to away from home. Obviously you need to have a home location set, but if you do have it set to away from home, it won't record gear guard when you're parked at home because it knows that um, the vehicle is secure. And then in the everywhere mode, it's just gonna record no matter where you're at, if you've got someone that's close to the vehicle or bumps into the vehicle, um, it's going to take a video. Now when it does record videos, you'll be able to access them here. So motion detected will show you anytime motion was detected near the vehicle and you'll be able to see a video there. Alarm will show you videos where the alarm was triggered and then you can also star videos and those will show in the start section here. And then the final selection down here is gear guard alarm. This is basically the alarm system. So the lights will blink, um, the horn will honk and that's how you turn on the alarm for the vehicle. You'll also get a notification through the app on your phone if the alarm is set off. The second icon on the left here is for your lighting. So you've got the cabin light controls here. You can have them turn on when you open the door or you can have them always off. If you wanna turn them on manually and just have them on all the time, that's the little button to be able to do that there. This controls the brightness. The display has a couple different settings. So right now it's obviously in daytime mode. I can manually set it to night mode and then also you can set it to auto and it will just detect your lighting settings and adjust accordingly. You can also adjust the brightness of your display with this bar here. So you can turn the accent lighting on here. There's a couple different options for how bright you want that to display. 
And then the third icon here displays information about your vehicle. So you've got your trips here. If you want to track a trip, this is the screen where you'll be able to do that. You can reset and it will reset all the metrics for a trip. It keeps track of your total distance, average speed, the duration of the trip, how efficient you were on the trip in terms of your kilowatt hours and the total energy you used. And then on the right side here is all the information for the vehicle that you own. This is where your odometer is to see how many miles you have on the vehicle, your VIN number, battery, what series you've got, um, exterior and interior colors, and all that other information. So these first four icons here will always stay the same. The fifth icon will update based on what you've used most recently. So right now mine is on the camera system. You're gonna see an overhead view of the vehicle here, which is really nice for parking or even if you're off-roading, trying to determine if there's any obstacles nearby. And then this is the front view camera. You can switch to your rear view camera with this little icon down here. And then you can also change from this overhead view to a view of the side cameras. Now this is also, I think gonna be really nice for off-roading to be able to see obstacles and rocks that are close to the vehicle through those side cameras. And then this last icon here is the rest of the options. You can see cameras, which I just showed you is the one I used most recently. You can access your gear guard videos through here. Also, you can select your phone and access your contacts and make calls from there. So you've also got your settings here. The first selection is connect. This lets you set up Bluetooth devices. There's Wi-Fi. This will display again, the local Wi-Fi. And then if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, it will show that here. You can turn on your hotspot from this menu. Also, you've got your garages here. It's showing my home garage, and then you can add more garages from this screen as well. And the camp speaker is located in this menu as well. If you want to keep that locked in so you can't just quickly slide it out, there is a lock for that if you wanted to use that. Then in your vehicle settings here, you've got your door unlock. So when you unlock the vehicle, it'll either unlock all the doors or just the driver doors. Also, when the vehicle is put in park, it'll either keep the vehicle locked, unlock just the driver door, or unlock all doors. There's proximity locking. This is based on your app in your phone, so when you walk up to the vehicle, it will automatically unlock it. You can set that to be active everywhere or just when you're away from home. And then if you want, you can set auto relock. So if you unlock the doors and the doors aren't opened, then it will relock the vehicle. You can also turn on and off the power hood operation from this menu. There's side mirror auto folding and the unfolding is actually a separate menu. So make sure if you're trying to use this, you turn both of these options on because otherwise the mirrors will just fold shut, but then they won't automatically open. And then the last option in this menu is the rear and side mirror auto tinting. So at night, this keeps bright lights behind you uh, a little bit more dim so they're not glaring in your eyes. It's a pretty nice little feature. There's a driver plus option. This lets you set your forward collision warning and it determines how sensitive that is. This is where your automatic emergency braking is also located. There's a lane departure warning. So if you're not using your turn signal and you start moving out of a lane, it will alert you that you're doing that. You've got blind spot warning in here. You've got a proximity warning. So this will be based on how close you are to an object when you're parking. The front camera will automatically turn on by default when you switch from reverse to drive. You can turn that off here. There's a rear cross traffic warning. Um, this is actually really nice. A lot of vehicles have this, but when you're backing up, if there's a vehicle or person approaching from either side, it will give you a little beep to let you know not to keep backing up. And this is also where you can turn on and off the automatic high beams. Then you've got updates. You can see which version I'm running here. And then it will also display anything that's new in the latest software updates in this menu here. So the next icon is for service. 
This allows you, if you're trying to change the wipers, to be able to do that more easily. There's also car wash mode here. You can access that in the other setting I showed you earlier. If you're needing to change your tire, this is where you'll wanna set the tire change mode. So what it'll do is raise the vehicle to the highest setting and it's gonna make it easiest to pull the tire off so you can change it. If you're towing, there's a setting for the park brake release. And then if the vehicle is getting shipped, you can set it to vehicle shipping. This will optimize the battery life so it's not um, draining when you're not using the vehicle. And then the last cool little option in the service menu here is kind of hidden is show and tell. So if you're wanting to take pictures of your truck with the lights on, but still lock it, you can turn this setting on here. This will basically keep the lights on and the screens on when the vehicle is locked. So essentially it's a show and tell, car show, or if you're taking pictures mode. And lastly, in the vehicle settings, you've got exterior lights. So you can have the light bars react when you lock or unlock the vehicle, that defaults to on. There's also the um, green lighting when the vehicle is charging. This will only display when the vehicle is unlocked. Also, your entry lights are accessed here. This is those cool compass puddle lights that display from the mirrors on the ground. You can turn on guide lights here, and this will keep the exterior lights on after you lock the vehicle for um, whatever time you set, if you need some extra lighting as you're walking away from the truck. If you want the charge port light to stay on when the vehicle is locked, so that little green light that comes on around the charge port, you can turn that on here, and automatic high beams can also be accessed through this menu. Then you've got your apps over here. There's media, you can turn on HD radio, and then there's also Alexa controls. I have not set this up yet, but this is where you can set up Alexa and you can use voice commands for a lot of the features. Then you've got your drivers and keys here. It will display anyone you've got saved as a driver and as you add people as drivers, it will save their controls, seat settings, mirror settings and all that. So you can access that through this menu here. And then lastly, there's a bunch of legal and privacy info on this screen here. And then you've got your energy. This will display your range based on your current drive mode. So you'll see right now I've got it on that drift setting from the previous screen. If I go back to my drive modes and set it to conserve, my range is automatically going up. It's going to adjust based on which drive mode you're in. You can also click this box and it will give you an idea of your range based on different drive modes. And this is also adjusted based on your driving history. So it's going to use your personal driving history to determine what your range would be in these different modes. You can see you've also got your current battery percentage. I can open the charge port door from here. So in the top right screen, you can set your charge limits. Now there's different recommendations for what percentage you're charging to. 70% is the recommended for daily use. This is going to give you the least battery wear. You can set it to 85% for extended trips um, and that's showing as reduced battery wear. And then when you charge all the way up to 100%, obviously you're gonna get the maximum range, but you will get a little bit more battery wear when you do that. So you can see I can just select different charge settings based on what I need for daily use or if I'm taking a longer trip. Now another feature, you want to remember this, the 120 volt outlets, which there are quite a few of in this truck, are automatically turned off. So if you're trying to use any of the 120 volt outlets, you need to access this screen and click this button and turn on those outlets. And then you'll notice there'll be a little icon that pops up in the middle of the screen here to show you that the 120 outlets are on. Now, I wouldn't recommend leaving the outlets on unless you're using them, so I'm gonna turn that off. In this screen, you can also set a charging schedule. If you were away from your vehicle or wanted to set specific times where it charges, you can leave it plugged in and this will allow it to only charge during those specific times. 
And then finally on the screen, you can adjust the amps that you're charging at. Basically this says if you're using a shared or unfamiliar circuit, um, you can reduce your amps so there aren't any issues with charging. I haven't had to mess with this at all yet. So um, I'll obviously let you guys know if I run into a situation where this is something that I need to adjust. And the final option here is the owner's guide. It, it defaults to this homepage here with a bunch of quick links to commonly asked questions, I'm assuming. And then on the left side, you've got all sorts of different subjects that you can dive into if you're looking for more information on something specific. Now there's also a search bar option up here. You can look for pretty much anything you're trying to get information on and I have found that this works quite well. So if there's something specifically you're trying to find, recommend just searching the owner's guide and getting your information there. All right, so next up, let's get into the driver screen. The driver display is a 12.3 inch landscape oriented screen. On the left of the screen, there's a couple options that you can select from there. To move through those menus, you use the buttons on the steering wheel here. So if I press and hold either right or left, it will scroll through the options on the driver display. So you've got those three screens that you can choose from on the left. The middle shows you an overhead view, and then when you put it into drive, it's gonna zoom out and show you a rear view of the truck. The left-hand stock by the steering wheel here lets you control the wipers. So there's a toggle switch for all the different settings on the wipers. There's actually quite a few different settings you can choose from here, which is really nice. And there's also an auto setting on the wipers. And then on this left stock over here as well, you've got controls for your lights. So defaults to auto, you can set to parking or turn them off. And then you've got just regular lights on. You can do lights and front fog or lights and all fog. On the right of the screen here, it's showing you whether you're in park, reverse, neutral, or drive. Now you can switch between those modes with the stock on the right here. So I'm in park right now, if I pull down, it will shift me into drive. If I push up, that's gonna put me in reverse. And if I just hold down, it'll put me into neutral. Now to put it back into park, I just hit the button at the end of the stock here. So you'll notice on the right side of the screen here, I've got this little half circle dial and that's gonna show me how efficient I'm driving. So as I accelerate, that line is gonna turn blue to let me know that I'm consuming energy and that will go up depending on how much I'm accelerating. And then when I'm using the regenerative braking and slowing down, it's actually gonna go green to show me that I'm gaining efficiency back. Pretty cool. Now you'll also notice on the driver display, when I select the drive modes, the little icon in the lower left is going to show you what drive mode you're in. So there's icons for each drive mode. Right now I've got it in sport. There's a little leaf for conserve mode. There's an icon for the off-road mode. And then there's also one for towing mode. Also these little bars here show you what ride height you're at. So currently I'm in the standard ride height, which is right in the middle. This will adjust obviously based on the ride height you're in. So there's also a full set of sensors all around the vehicle and those will alert you when you're getting too close to an object. You can see those pop up here. They give you a range. So there's three or four different uh, distances that it'll display at, and it will chime at you also as you're getting closer to objects. So on the left side of the steering wheel, the scroll wheel controls your volume. And then the left and right buttons are going to switch between either tracks on songs or radio stations. Buttons on the right of the steering wheel are going to primarily control your adaptive cruise control. The scroll wheel will adjust the spacing with the car in front of you. And then the left and right buttons here will control your speed. 
In this first clip, I'm just using the adaptive cruise control. So you basically just set a speed. It's going to keep distance with the car in front of you and just maintain that speed. And here I've got the highway assist on. So you set a speed, it maintains the gap to the car in front of you, and it keeps you in your lane and steers for you. Now you can't make lane changes with this, but it will keep you in your lane. And you can see here, I'm just adjusting the distance that it's following the car in front of me. This works really well and it's a super nice feature to have. All right, everyone, that pretty much sums it up. If you haven't done it yet, check out my other in-depth video where I go through all the cool features and gadgets that are included with this truck. And stay tuned for my next episode where I'm going to go through all my camping gear and everything I'm prepping for camping and overlanding. Thanks, everyone.